Hello again, everyone. A uh, question that came in off of Facebook. Thanks for accepting my friend request. I've been living hell for 18 and a half years. I've lost everything because of him to include our child, which is my only concern. The web of lives is the craziest nightmare that no legal entity seems to have a clue. He has been rewarded time and time again by the judicial system for destroying all of us. I live in Virginia, the land of no change despite evidence-based policies. I'm desperately trying to save our child who is now showing signs of psychopathic behaviors and beliefs. He is 16, two years under the control of his mind, controlling father, and, and at an age of major neutral growth demands by his brain, I am terrified for his future. Are you willing to share your resources for how you became knowledgeable and helpful of others? What, who do the courts take into consideration regarding the devastating effects of narcissistic parent? As in theories, medical, psychological, psychiatric studies, thanks. Well, I'm sorry for your situation. I'm sorry what you're going through. And what I'm about to tell you is probably not going to have much comfort. You know, the family courts opera, basically who wins in family court is who has the better attorney. That's, that, that's what it is. You know, I've heard stories of full-on narcissistic uh, diagnoses of, of, of parents and by the state's own psychologists, you know, mountains of evidence, lawyer, law firms as well that have been involved, where it was just evidence after evidence after evidence of symptoms of narcissistic abuse. And the courts don't hear it. They don't care. You know, the family courts are a cookie cutter system, depending on what your past history was. Um, you know, you can sometimes be pigeonholed. It is very, very difficult, if not damn near impossible to get a court to listen to you, especially if you have two parents fighting for, for the children. You know, if one parent walks away, it makes it easier. But in cases like this, um, it's usually the person who wins out is the one with the better attorney. The one who has more money to spend on legal fees and attorney fees and stuff like that. Because it's a game. It's a game, you know, perpetrated by, by the legal community. It's all a wink and a nod, you know. And it's about sucking as much money out of everybody as possible. And they're going to give the child basically to the person with, with the better attorney. In regards to narcissistic abuse, you know, by and large, women usually win out in custody cases, all right? But if there's some kind of other history that a narcissist was able to hang you up on, whether, you know, and what they usually do to do this is have you preemptively arrested for something, domestic violence, they set you up, and then once they got you in the system like that, once you've been arrested for something, it is nearly impossible to overcome that. It is nearly impossible. And, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of you guys who have been set up by narcissistic exes, both men and women. I know it happens. Luckily, it didn't happen to me. You know, I got out before any of that could happen. But once you're already in the legal system and they hit you with some kind of legal charge, usually a restraining order, domestic violence, something, try to have you committed, trying to prove the other person is a narcissist at that point, is damn near impossible because there is a community out there now who of narcissists that realize like they didn't know what what they call themselves they didn't know what they were doing was narcissism they know what they're doing is wrong but now that it's being identified and their tactics are being called out now they now you got these people who go to narcissist study narcissism and figure out how to flip it back out on their victims so they preemptively get, you know, have you arrested, have you committed. Okay, and remember, narcissists are very convincing. They're charming, they're convincing, they know how to play the role. They are damn, damn near impossible to beat in court. They're damn well near. And the courts realize that because the courts realize we're living in a narcissistic society. And the courts are trying to protect their own money-making cabal. Family courts especially are accountable to nobody. They answer to nobody. It's the only it's the only court system 
where there's no jury trial. It's all some administrative, some judge or some administrative judge, and they're not accountable to anybody. You know, you see some states are starting to get involved with, with the out-of-control family courts like Pennsylvania, Arizona, some counties in California where it's just out of control, where you got politicians going to family courts and sitting in there and watching what happens case after case after case in utter shock that they had no idea how this happened and how these people operate so without any accountability whatsoever. Your son is 16. In a year or two, he's going to, Virginia might be 17 or 18 to be a full adult. My suggestion to you is to stop trying, you might want to just stop with the family courts at this time and wait two years until he's an adult and then you don't have to deal with this anymore because it'd probably take you about two years to get what you wanted anyway. And the best thing you can do is be as stable as you can, be as loving as you can at this point. Because I need you need to be realistic. You need to like if he was a young child, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, where you had a few years of development, it might be worth the fight. For a sixteen year old who can basically decide where he wants to live on his own anyway, you know, you gotta assume he's already been brainwashed the money it's going to cost to have them analyzed and have the state therapists come in and have the home assessments come in only to lose anyway. Only to lose anyway because the courts don't want to know about this. They want to act like it doesn't exist and that you're the problem. Like, and I, I don't want to upset you and I don't want to depress you and bum you out, but I don't want to blow smoke up your ass either. You know, I got to keep this realistic and you got to look at it like what's my best course of action for real here? What's plausible and what can happen, you know, for real? And chances are the way it looks is he's already got you over the barrel. And for two years to put yourself through this type of torture only to lose out and then lose financially and the money, the money lost is astronomical. Only to be told in four minutes that, yeah, no. I don't see any problem here because they don't care. They don't even read the damn reports. So I'm sorry for your situation. I really do hope it gets better for you. But what I would suggest is for you to prepare for him to be an adult, be as loving as you possibly can. Okay, for less than two years until he's an actual adult, you know, the family court's going to take very little stock in what you say at this point, especially if the kid, if you're 16 year old, is siding with siding with your ex. Okay, you got him, you got, and then you got the wishes of the child that is weighed heavily at this point. So, you know, I'm sorry for your situation. I really do hope it gets better. Uh, anybody with any other input on this, this is another, this is another spot where uh, Angela could probably clue you in uh, on this information. She's dealt with, she works for a law firm that deals with this type of stuff. And she has horror story after horror story of mountains and mountains of evidence for their clients that is just outward, just utterly ignored. Just utterly ignored. But that's why channels like this and us talking about this condition is so important. Because if we get it out in the forefront and we just sho keep shoving it in society's face, eventually, they're going to have to deal with it. They're going to have to deal with it. So I hope that helps you a little bit. Anybody else who can uh, throw her some advice in the comments, please do. I really appreciate it. And again, if you do enjoy this channel and you want to see it grow, please consider making a contribution to the PayPal donate link in the description box. And remember, if you do make a donation of any size and you want me to read your story into a video, you go right to the top of the list. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye.